Have you ever heard of the secret story of Victoria's secret lover from the Colombian areas? No? Well, don't worry about it. We're gonna talk about it today. <laughs> That's right. We're playing as Julio. Julio who, you ask? Julio Iglesias. Not that Julio Iglesias, but Julio Iglesias, the future leader of a new Granada, my boys. New Granada or Colombia, as some of you probably realize, it's the same country with the addition of Panama. Starts off not amazingly. We we only have 9,000 national revenue and we're pretty far back with our technologies as well. At least we have romanticism so that's actually gonna be of huge help since with romanticism we're gonna go to our political lens, decrees and we're gonna set up the greener gas campaign in all of these states here essentially every single state is gonna have a greener gas campaign actually no I'm wrong I'm gonna cancel it from here and I'm also gonna cancel it from here because I need the extra authority points to uh, set up my consumption tax I forgot we don't start with any so we're gonna set up a uh, service consumption tax and that's it because we don't have any more authority points feels bad man since the greener grass campaign is really vital for our uh, country we only have 1.61 million population it is extremely bad population wise and most of that population is actually focused in a couple of states here namely Antigoya and Bogota that's it the other ones here by comparison 100,000 12,000 not even integrated let's make it an incorporated state 120 and 200,000 so really not amazing let's go back here and we're gonna research the stock exchange up next and we're also gonna start building up some stuff we don't have anything right now I mean we don't even have basic manufacturing set up for tools for glass for food Food for paper mills, nothing. Even from the rural part, we're missing out on iron mines, coal mines, even dye plantations. So uh, yeah, so that's gonna take a while to get this country on its track, that's for sure. We don't even have a construction sector built, so let's do that first. Let's build one construction sector in our capital and follow that up with two lumber camps since we also need to get lumber going. Right now we got one lumber camp and we're only using lumber and cloth or fabric sorry the build stuff we get fabric from our livestock uh, farms we also want to start with the quick war against either Ecuador or Venezuela depending on which one of these would actually be easier to deal with since uh, sometimes Venezuela and Ecuador can get other nations to support them you know jump on their side we don't want that if you're trying to follow this run yourself just reload since it's the start of the campaign until you get a situation where either Venezuela or Ecuador is not gonna get any help and then you should be able to win it. Don't forget you also have to set up a uh, declared interest in the Ecuadorian area before you can actually attack them because you might be wondering oh why can I not make this puppet but I can make this puppet. That's why. That's right there why. We actually start with line infantry and cannon artillery so overall it's really not that bad militarily speaking plus we actually have 18 regiments or battalions, whatever they're called. Well, 15 plus another three from conscripts. So it's really better than Venezuela and Ecuador as long as we 1v1 them. Legislation wise, we're a little bit backwards. Not gonna bullshit you guys. We need a lot of legislation to pass. And I'm gonna go ahead and select colonial resettlement first. I recommend colonial resettlement because it also gives 100% migration attraction in unincorporated states. So that means states that we're gonna conquer afterwards, they're gonna get a lot more migration. We don't need to set up the uh, greener grass campaign in those particular new conquered regions as long as we have this particular colonial resettlement. We also don't have any general at the start, so let's recruit one in the Gran Colombia area. All right, this guy is pretty good. Mountain expert sounds amazing. And let's also promote him to level three for now. We are lacking in bureaucracy. And before we build any more admin buildings, we need to build the stuff that's already in the queue. And then after, we also got to build a paper mill so that our admin buildings can have paper produced domestically since the only other option is go to import trade routes paper and just for one piece of paper we're losing out a lot of money it's not really super worth it importing a lot of stuff early on it's a lot better obviously to just have this by yourself in your country but that being said you can look around your trades at the start and see what trades would actually give you a little bit of uh, income it's worth getting a couple of early on trades going before you start manufacturing these goods yourself directly sadly i had to give uh, the british a treaty port in bolivar once i uh, take over venezuela since the french joined on the side of the venezuelans and i am going to mainly rely on the english to fight this war for me rather than you know me doing the heavy lifting here and that is an insane 
insanely quick war. We've basically conquered most of Venezuela already. Luckily, the Venezuelans are focusing on fighting the British rather than actually fighting us. And we're just about to enforce Dariogo. We gave treaty port to Bolivar and we've puppeted Venezuela. We will have to take back Bolivar eventually since uh, it's kind of annoying that the British have this small little province here. Albeit only 2,000 population and it's not really an amazing treaty port, is it? So I might not bother with it. Depends. Let's see how it goes. The great part is that we have a solid start and I didn't even need to restart this. Damn, we already have penalties from wood? What? I guess we have to queue up a couple more logging camps then. You know what, I'm also gonna hold out before I attack the uh, Ecuadorians because Ecuador doesn't take as much priority as my economy does right now. Since we passed our colonial legislation, we have changed our declared interest in the La Plata area and we are establishing three colonies here. It's gonna take a while, but you know, better to do it now than later since we're gonna be able to get at least two, three hundred thousand extra population from just colonizing these areas. Looks like we can also change our government by adding the catholic church and the landowners we go up to a hundred legitimacy interesting and we also enacted the uh, dedicated police force that's basically put us back a little bit uh, with our bureaucracy because we're getting 38 percent tax waste from not having enough bureaucracy since we now have two institutions to handle essentially so let's go ahead and uh, queue up a few bureaucratic buildings now since we have built extra construction sectors so we can quickly build up these administrative administrative centers. I'm also going to be uh, switching over here and I'm going to prioritize the supply option for my goods that offers me more money essentially since financially I'm, I'm not doing great. I am a little bit struggling, not going to lie. Colombia is not as rich as I uh, initially thought it would be. I'm just joking. I knew it's not going to be rich. <laughs> Slowly but surely we're getting pretty much all of the modern institutions in our country since now we also have a basic health system alongside an education system, law enforcement and colonial colonial affairs. Plus, our colonies in the south keep on developing, improving our economy as well. But before any talks of expansion, we have to ban slavery. Banning slavery is gonna save our nation, improve our economy considerably, and it's gonna make us a modern society since, let's face it, slavery is an echo of bygone ages when humans were not enlightened as we are today. Boom shakalaka, we just got 20 relations with four of our major parties from banning slavery so suffice to say we're all on the same picture here or all on the same page wait is it picture or page oh god i don't even remember the saying time to also build some uh, ports in our colonies in the south without these ports they get zero market access and zero market access basically means it's not even any point in having these colonies if they're not attached to our main market I'm also improving relations with the united states me and the u.s uh, go back a long way we're bestest of bestest brothers these and uh, future generations of Colombians and Americans are gonna work together towards establishing an international sugar network. We're gonna have a sugar network together. Cannot set a second interest. Oh man, I need to grow my country a little. I am such a backwards country at this moment. Before I even go and uh, attack Ecuador, I need to get a second uh, interest available. I feel like Brazil was actually easier than Colombia is, man. These guys have it pretty tough over here. And we can do our first railway Let's start it off in uh, Kauka since we do need a bit of extra market access over here. Oh, was? Aber unsere Austrian attacken our Dettenstein. This is a clear reference to the historical great relations between the Austrian Empire and um, Colombia, which never really existed. That's just really Pepega. <laughs> What the hell happened here, man? Why did they even... Oh, no freaking way. We can become a protectorate of Austria. Just a little bit surprised that they have protective attitude towards me. Like, out of all the nations, I would have expected Spain. Oh, really, Austria? You want me to join your customs union? Seriously, bro. Why are they so interested in Colombia out of all places? This makes no sense to me. And the French just annexed a huge chunk of the African parts. Why is East India Company... Is di whoa, 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 Hold on a second. Are you telling me they're not a puppet of... Uh, uh, England anymore? They're a rival of the English? What? Oh my god, did the entirety of India just break away from the British Empire? Off the top of my head, I hate the color because it's exactly the same like the Dutch East Indies color, so I cannot really tell them apart, not gonna lie. And second off, glad to see that happen. The British are really gonna struggle now. Oh, Victoria, what's going on? They named the game after you, yet you still don't have... Wait, are you the first great power? No, you're the second great power, not even close to 
the f oh my god 500 prestige difference between the brits and the french that is huge i am gonna improve relations with the british though i want to get good relations with the brits and the uh americans since i might use them in the future against my enemies and we just got nitroglycerin but that being said there is a problem with nitroglycerin we could switch over the production method here which means we would be getting more resources but check out these amazing modifiers here 30 percent mortality for laborers 20 and 10 percent for engineers and machinists we don't have much population and having 30 percent mortality rate for these guys is a huge deal i'm not gonna allow them to use nitroglycerin i'm gonna wait until we get dynamite which has no mortality rate by comparison to nitroglycerin so i guess i'm gonna rush dynamite for extra production it's also time that we ramp up our iron production since i just switched on over to iron frame buildings it does mean that it's gonna you know tank my economy a little bit i'm also gonna attempt to restore a monarchy here well not restore because i guess we never were a monarchy right but i'm gonna implement a monarchy a fresh new colombian land for the fresh new colombian prince of bel Air. that made more sense in my mind honestly i just realized that venezuela actually broke away from me i don't even know when that happened but it happened at some point and i'm not happy to see that I'm gonna just manually conquer everything here i don't know why i went with the vassalized i shouldn't have puppeted i should not have puppeted them that was a mistake clearly march my units march devastate the countryside of venezuela our you know future lands and stuff maybe not devastate them maybe just kindly politely ask them to become a part of us let's say and 99 percent and they're gonna be capitulatonsky noise now we've gotten a lot bigger the usa would agree to a trade agreement with us i'm gonna use that because realistically speaking i'm basically getting no money from tariffs i'm getting 1.4 thousand which is insanely low and yes our economy is insanely bad still we're struggling financially and i'm trying my best to build all the stuff that i need to build so that i don't collapse economically as this nation truly one of the hardest starts i've ever had in victoria 3 on the bright side i can use the spanish to help me out against ecuador and peru bolivia and guess what the spanish have 215 mobilized battalions already i don't know how the freaking hell these guys managed to get that many but i'm not complaining oh it's because they're already at war what were you in spain oh god i should have checked this before Okay, that's just, uh, the First World War? What the schnapps is this? Germany and all of Germany against Austria, Sardinia, Piemont, and Britain. Uh, please join Spain. Please, please join Spain. <laughs> please. Oh, they joined. Look at that. They joined. All right, let's see. Should be fairly easy still. Hopefully, the Spanish finish their war quickly and they can help us out afterward. We have managed to get skirmish infantry, though, so that might be a little bit above the uh, line infantry that Ecuador has. Oh, this is just getting weird why is greece out of all nations on the side of ecuador that doesn't make sense oh we got it boys we got another war without any sort of a battle granted it did help out the fact that we had the spanish on our side otherwise i'm fairly certain we would have lost that engagement and for the sixth time i'm trying to get less affair you guys know that old saying right six times a charm we need less affair by the way because it's gonna give us a minus 25 percent and loan interest rate and right now we're basically living from loan to loan the tactic is i'm building up until i cannot anymore then i wait for a while until i pay off some of my loans and then i try again to build in the hopes that i improve my economy it's it's working we actually went from 2 million gdp to 6 million gdp right now it's not amazing but honestly this country is not doing a great from the start and i also kind of think i fucked up some things i've made some mistakes that i normally would restart for but truth be told I'm not restarting because I'm having fun. Like the fact that I messed up here and there makes it a little bit more entertaining for me that I have to fix that situation. So instead of blobbing into all of South America, like I've done already as Brazil, I've done already as uh, Argentina, these uh, videos before. This one, we're, we're restraining ourselves to the Colombian area because, you know, mistakes have been made and it's time to fix them. And we have to fix those mistakes by first off checking what the shortages are. So I got coal shortage, that's why 
I've already put in my queue two coal mines. I'm gonna bring one of these coal mines up a little bit since we need to make sure that the shortage is dealt with instantly. Coal is actually a major problem for us right now. And then afterwards, we have the other buildings being built, which again are mainly shortages for various uh, other manufacturers that require these goods. End of the day, guys, this is an economic game and an economic simulator as well as a social political simulator, right? So I don't need to blob out in the entirety of the map in every single video, right? I know that some of you are used to it, but personally, I'm having a lot more fun just building up a horrible nation into a great one. Is that like playing toll for Vicky 3? I guess it is, isn't it? Hey, we did manage to get, let's say, fair. That's going to be of super help right now. Next up, what we're going to go for is property to women. That's one step in the right direction. The right direction being women's suffrage, of course. Bro, seriously, I'm trying to annex my vassal of Ecuador or puppet of Ecuador and Peru, Bolivia is again trying to cuck me over. I'm going to ask them for some states if that's the situation here. Peru, Bolivian pastaza sounds good to me. And let's get one more. Cajamarca or Cajamarca, however you pronounce this. I know I'm going to have some angry uh, Peruvians in the chat be like, yo, that's not how you pronounce. Shut up, Ludi. And we're going to offer regime change in uh, Peru, Bolivia for the Americans. They seem to enjoy changing regimes, don't they? Mm, just saying. I could even get in the Brazilians. I don't want that, though. If I do get in the Brazilians, then they're probably going to back out and I want to go to war with them. This state over here has got 300k population. This one, another 50k. It's not much, but it's going to help out our economy considerably to get basically an extra 1 million with the Ecuadorian lands. Uh, what the fuck, Germany? <laughs> Subjugation demand? Get the fuck out of here. For real? Why is it with all of these German nations having interest in South America? I'm I'm getting confused and worried at the same time. And of course they gave up without a fight, bruh. Just when I was about to get the Americans to actually help me out. But that being said, I can still attack Peru Bolivia. I've noticed that Brazil has an interest in this area here. So I'm gonna start improving relations with Brazil. I got super bad relations with them right now. But the reality is I'm not gonna attack them. They're a massive nation already. 89 battalions is a lot of battalions and I can use them against the Peruvians also have a few provinces here that the Peruvians took from them at some point in history after we finish with the coal mines we're also going to try and produce as many textile mills we're a little bit behind with textile mills and with our food industries and we have a lot of new provinces that we can build these in especially the Ecuadorian lands 41,000 peasants ready to work for us here we're also doing a little bit of conquest in the Nicaraguan and Costa Rican areas this this is really easy to get population right here and most of the times nobody gets involved in here except Mexico and if Mexico gets involved the US is gonna join in but considering the situation in Mexico right now I somehow highly doubt they're gonna get involved in this they're getting their asses handed to them my boys ah damn I cannot add Guatemala to I guess I'm just gonna have to do with the uh, five states that I'm taking right now now that I think about it I should have probably attacked these guys earlier on and of course they gave up so I can oh wait Wait, 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 wait. Doesn't mean I got a truce with these guys, right? No, it doesn't. But even though I don't have a truce with them, I got great relations. So I got to damage the relations first. Do I have great relations with everybody for real? Oh my God, I do have great relations with everybody. Come on. No, no, Guatemala, I don't have great relations with. Let's attack these guys. And the cool part is that they're allied to Nicaragua. So let's add more conquest sea beasts here. Oh, right. I see there's an actual alliance chain here, isn't there? Yes, sir, there is. Check out this quality diplomatic play right here. Here. I offered obligation to the British and they're helping me to attack Miss Kigo, which, uh, by the way, is a protectorate of the British Empire. Do you see where the problem lies? Oh, for Christ's sake, Mexico. Come on, you're embarrassing yourself. You really want to go up against me. I'm going to call in my best friend, America, then. Return state of California. Here we go. California. Uh -huh. What do you think I'm going to say to you? I probably should never go to Britain. It's got talent should I correct goodbye oh wait let me add more goals for myself in that case America just joined America Schnippeldorp yeah El Salvadorian Chiapas and also Yucatan I guess is better oh my god 500,000 in Yucatan hails to the Yama boys revolution oh god no no this one's gonna stop at 60% so we might be able to enact that monarchy that I've been dreaming about and clearly El Salvador decided why have war when you can just give half of your country and still survive 
smart not gonna lie that's pretty smart of them now let's standardize all of these production methods here and let's also see what we're gonna do with our economy because right now we're making almost no money we got 50,000 on the plus with high taxation and we're losing 80,000 holy mother of god 40,000 just for government wages alone that is insane and most of that is from government administration that tells me that I actually need to fix my government administration input so that means paper is probably a little bit too expensive i'm gonna have to forcefully yep there you go paper is a massive issue we also have to fix our market access in the newly conquered provinces and also i'm in the process of actually integrating these lands once that's done that's gonna fix my situation also we've had a pretty great period of uh, economical revival we actually are making money now and we went up to 18 million gdp overall which places us in 19 spot i don't know i'm not gonna count all the way down to there okay we're between sweden and egypt it's pretty obvious guys come on uh the point is that we've stabilized the economy so that means we can now expand the amount of construction sectors that we have which we couldn't have done before because we would have killed our economy as consequence and to make it really short i stabilized the economy by building what i really needed at the base lowest level which was primarily coal iron wood paper mills and tooling workshops the usual suspects to be fair oh and uh, steel factories was also really vital because I had a few steel shortages. And of course, the fact that we finished incorporating all of the states that we conquered before made a huge difference. We're still in the process of incorporating uh, Pastaza because it takes a long time, 20 years to be precise to incorporate them since their homelands have nothing in common with us, meaning that the majority of the people living here, they're not in any way, shape or form related to the people in our country, which I'm actually not even sure what they are. What is our primary country? Okay, we are North Andean, and we also accept Central American as our two primary cultures, apparently. 2.1 million and 1.5 million of both, and then we have Afro-Caribbeans, Amazonians, Mayans, and so on. So this area clearly doesn't have any of that, mostly has Amazonians and Quechas and so on. Okay, we got a rebellion. Let's kill the rebels. Come on, can I not have five seconds without a rebellion? This looks really similar to the gay pride flag, doesn't it? The Quecha flag. What's the difference between the two? I actually want to know now. What is the difference between the two? Is it like one of the colors different or w w what's different? And hold up a second here. This does not look like a native to me, okay? This looks like a white guy dressed up as a native. What the schnapps is this, man? What is this model? His name is General Tupac. What? <laughs> I'm refraining from making a lot of bad jokes right now, honestly. I've actually gone back recently to playing uh, Atlas, which is like, um, it started as a mod for uh, Ark Survival Evolve. I used to play a lot of Ark before, to be fair, and I, I, I used to play a lot of Atlas also. I'm curious if you guys want me to do a video on Atlas. It's like a pirate game with like an open seas. It's really, really fun. It's got a really small niche community as well, but I feel like some of you might actually enjoy that game. Oh my god, they want me to enact a presidential republic. Okay. It's time to get rid of the monarchy. I'm sorry. It lasted whilst it did, but I cannot afford a revolution right now. This Ludi, bro, he he just cave just like that. Not even fight for the strength of the monarchy. Yeah, I'll be honest. I only wanted the authority points from enacting monarchy. But now, you know, that it's come to the point where we're going into revolution land. I don't care about the authority points that much. All right, just saying. Okay, are you actually shitting me right now? Now I'm getting a revolution because they want me to preserve monarchy. So essentially whether I click on preserve monarchy or enact presidential republic, I'm going to get a revolution. What? And the stupid part is that both sides have the same equal land. How can it be the same land from the divergent sides? It doesn't make sense, dude. Holy shit. This game, bro. Oh my god. There, I cancel. Are you happy now? Please don't tell me I'm gonna go back to the other people revolting now. Alright, now the presidential republicans only have 81 support. So it's not going above 100, so it means I don't need to enact the presidential republic. Even though they had more than 100 before. So, I gotta keep an eye on this. It might just all of a sudden change to over 100 in a second. Okay, slowly but surely they're getting more accustomed to the fact that we're gonna stay a monarchy. <laughs> and it's going down actually the revolution now. They're not 
not so pissed about it anymore. I love to check the factories after I build them. It's really cool to see how they start producing a lot of money if they actually have a trade good that is in high demand like engines are right now. And it's insane how quickly the cash reserve also goes up for these factories. I mean, look at this bad boy here. 16.7 and we literally just built this factory a little bit ago. Looks like steel is a bit expensive still. So I guess I should queue up a few steel factories up next. Ooh, check out that huge amount of money from getting silk. I also need more bureaucracy for that matter. Let's see what else I can get imported to alleviate my costs over here. Seems like North German iron is on the table. Don't you just love it when you start getting proletarian revolts all around the small insignificant countries like El Salvador here? Well, what's left of El Salvador anyway? And honestly, almost every single game Mexico gets to keep Colorado. <laughs> I don't know why, man, but the US does not want Colorado for some reason. Like, seriously, this is not the first time that they don't take Colorado from Mexico. Strange that they didn't take California yet, though, that's for sure. The Germans are also trying to form Germany the good old German way, if you know what I mean. They're killing everybody to do it. That's that's what I'm trying to say here. Holy snaps, I just saw that Buenos Aires has 500,000 population, and that's just on my side. Buenos Aires is actually divided in half, so all together with the Argentinian side, it's almost 800,000. Actually, it's above 800, 850,000. Why is it that people like this area? We did stabilize Colombia. I did not have the greatest of starts, and I've made a lot of mistakes, not gonna lie, but... The fact is, we went up to 22 million GDP, which is almost as much as the Japanese Shogunat. We're literally one below them. Oh, that is so depressing. I really was thinking to redo my Prussia run since I've done that really early on when the game was in early development, really, before it was even released. And I have a lot more knowledge about the game now. Don't think about today's video. Trust me, I do have a lot more. Okay, I know what I did wrong, all right? <laughs> and that's why I really feel like I want to redo my German run and see if I can get a billion GDP within the first 30 years. I feel like it's doable as Germany, especially if we do an early on conquest. If you want to see that, let me know. And until the next time, check out this amazing Japan run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.